So what's the difference between Parfums de Marly Leighton and Leighton Exclusif? We're gonna go ahead and cover that today because as I'm sure you guys are aware, Leighton is one of their most successful and popular fragrances from the House of Parfums de Marly. It's mentioned all across the internet, on YouTube, on Facebook, on all these different forums. People love Leighton, and there's a good reason for that. It's a great, mass appealing, smelling scent at a niche quality and a relatively affordable niche price. I'm sure you guys are aware of this, but you don't have to pay retail price for these. You can get them on discount websites. I will link both Leighton and Leighton Exclusive down below in the description. If you want to pick any of these up, you can follow those links and get them at a discount. So you hear a bunch of talk about the original Leighton, but you don't hear quite as much talk about Exclusive. And today we're going to go ahead and cover that and I'm going to tell you all about the scent and how it compares to Leighton and ultimately which one you should consider purchasing. So Leighton is known for being a mass appealing fragrance with great performance and great quality. This one really made a statement when it was released and a lot of people were talking about it very highly and it's a fragrance that does what it's intended to do very well. You have this nice apple, vanilla, somewhat of a cinnamon type of note going on here. It smells like a very sweet, seductive, fall and winter fragrance, although you can wear it into spring and summer if you want to as well. What's nice about this fragrance when you smell it, it has a bit of a menthol, kind of like minty type of note that you can pick up on when you smell it. That's giving it a little bit of freshness along with that apple, get a little bit of a freshness, a little bit of a sweetness, which ultimately makes this one very, very versatile, one that you can wear for really any situation, any time of the year for the most part here. I mean, it's a very wearable fragrance. And again, it's not going to be shy in the compliment department. This fragrance pulls in the compliments, and that's another reason why people go crazy over this stuff. It's a really solid release. Performance is no slouch with this scent either. Like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, it's a long-lasting and good projecting scent. You don't have to worry about really reapplying it or you, you know only lasting a few hours. Um, this is a fragrance that when you apply it in the morning and then go out, uh, go to work, or just do your stuff you're doing throughout the day, it's going to stick with you all day and it's going to be projecting while you're out there doing your thing. <laughs> Which when you're paying for a fragrance and you're paying a bit more money than you normally would for a designer, it's nice to have that good performance backing the scent up. Right, so we all know this one has a lot of great factors going towards the scent, you know, a lot of great things about it, which is why people like it so much. So now let's go and talk a little bit about Leighton Exclusive. From what I understand, it was only available in this smaller size bottle, but I've recently seen it actually show up in a 4.2 ounce bottle, which is the size of the original Leighton. So yes, I do believe you can get this in a 4.2 ounce bottle size. I've seen it online a little bit. Um, if any of you have gotten that bottle size, let me know down below. I wish I would have known about that before purchasing this one, that way I could have them all in the same size. But to be realistic with you here, for exclusive, you're probably only gonna need this smaller size bottle. Uh, we'll go ahead and get into that now. So how does exclusive smell in comparison to the original Leighton? To put it really, really simple and to break it down in the easiest way possible, it smells like Leighton, but just a bit dirtier, a bit earthier, and um, it's just a bit more kind of like rough around the edges, so to speak. And I don't mean that in terms of it being harsh or poor quality. I mean that in that it's got some sharper notes in here, some heavier notes that kind of breaks up the smooth, sensual creaminess of the original Leighton. You get some oud in here, you get this nice almond note, um, you just get some other type of somewhat animalic type of notes, not in a bad way, right? It's still, you know, a pretty mass appealing scent, but just a bit of a, a roughness to kind of break it up and just kind of make it smell a bit different. When you look at the note breakdown of this one, it looks quite a bit different than the note breakdown of the original Leighton. So, you know, when you get this fragrance in and you're smelling it for the first time, you're kind of thinking in your head, you know, how close can this really be to the original Leighton, right? The note breakdown looks almost nothing like Leighton, so, you know, what's going to go on here? But you will find that when you smell this one, it smells closer to the original than what you may think. There's just a little bit of some small touches here and there that really kind of makes it a bit more dirty, a bit more harsh, just gives it a bit more of an edge. One way I would describe this is if you want more of a mass appealing, designery type smelling fragrance, go for the original Leighton. And I think that's kind of one of the main 
uh, criticism points when you hear people talk about Leighton and really even a lot of these other parfums to Marley Fragrances is you'll hear people say, oh, you know, it's a niche house with relatively expensive prices, but their scents are, you know, a bit more on the designer side of things. And, you know, those people wouldn't really be wrong, right? I mean, you look at something like Leighton and, you know, Herod and these other scents, of course, they smell great. And, you know, of course, Percival, Sedley, so on. They smell great, but they do air on the more mass appealing side. And there's nothing wrong with that. You know, not every niche fragrance has to be something super unique and different. So I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but those people who are saying that would be correct. Now, whether you should be saying that as a point of criticism or not is completely up to your personal taste and what you look for in a fragrance. So for the original Leighton, bit more mass appealing, bit more designer leaning. However, for the people who do expect more of a niche fragrance, a niche smell from their niche fragrances, exclusive is where that comes in and fixes that issue easily. It really breaks up that DNA, gives it a bit more of a niche-like experience with that oud and those other notes, and you'd be surprised at how well this one kind of turns it into more of a niche smelling version of Leighton. I do find with Exclusive, you know, when you smell it, you get a bit of a smokiness in here too, kind of like almost a smoky oud type of thing going on. So it really kind of does a good job to break up that DNA and it gives you something with a bit more substance and just a bit more character. This one also does perform really, really good. So you're not sacrificing performance or anything with Leighton Exclusive or the original Leighton. Both of these fragrances do perform very good. This one, in, in particular, Exclusive, is very, very strong. I mean, this stuff, you know, it is no slouch in performance, which is why I said earlier, at this small size bottle, may be all you need. You know, when I apply this one, I'm usually going with two to three sprays, and that's really about all I'll need. Um, with Leighton, I'll usually go with a couple more than that, just so I can smell it for myself personally. But Exclusive, very strong. You don't need that many sprays with it. It will last you all day and then some, and it will also project quite a bit as well. And it's also worth noting that Exclusive is a parfum concentration, whereas the original Leighton is an eau de parfum concentration. So which one's gonna be more wearable? I think the answer is obvious here, but it's gonna be the original Leighton. If you're fully after wearability and mass appeal and compliments and all of that good stuff, go for the original Leighton. However, if you are someone who's wanting something a bit different and you want to kind of, you know, branch out a little bit and kind of have something that's going to be a bit more daring, you could go for Exclusive. Now, which one should you buy? That's going to be totally up to you. Like I just mentioned, if all you care about is mass appeal, go for the original Leighton. However, if you're someone who likes the original Leighton, it's worth giving Leighton Exclusive a shot. You know, I don't think it's redundant to own both of them. I started out with the original Leighton, I realized how much I love the scent, and I wanted to explore this one and kind of uh, get something that's a bit different so I can kind of break it up and switch them out when I'm wanting to wear them, and I think that's a great way to do it. No redundancy. If you like Leighton, chances are you're probably going to like Exclusive as well. Now, how much you like it is going to depend on how much you like, you know, fragrances that kind of push it a little bit in terms of kind of getting out of your personal comfort zone if you haven't experienced with that many niche fragrances yet. You know, some of you will like it more than others, but you know, again, if this one still does have that very strong latent backbone, will mean that you'll probably like it more than you may think. Now, if you haven't tried either version of Leighton and you just want to get started out, I would say for most of you, best idea would be to grab a sample of the original Leighton, try that one out first, or if you are someone who wants to do a blind buy, which people do, I blind bought just about all of my parfums to Marley fragrances, I know a lot of you guys do as well. If you want to go that route, I would start out with the original Leighton. Um, you know, it's just going to be more mass appealing and a bit easier to pull off. And then at that point, if you end up really liking it and you want something a bit different, you could go for this guy. I'm going to go and start to wrap it up here, guys. My final thoughts on Leighton versus Leighton Exclusive. They're both great. Which one you'll like better will depend on your taste and if you like more mass appealing or stuff that's a bit more different and out of the ordinary. Like I said, at some point, it is worth owning both of them if you are, of course, a fan of Leighton. If you don't like Leighton, then honestly, you're probably not going to like Exclusive that much just because they are so similar. Um, if the reason that you don't like Leighton is because it's too designer for you, then you might like Exclusive better. But if you just don't like Leighton just because you don't like the smell of it, maybe you're not into sweet fragrances, you like fresher stuff or whatever the case may be, 
then like I said, you're probably not going to like exclusive. You might as well just skip them both. So guys, that was going to do it for me. That was my thoughts on these two fragrances. Let me know down below in the comments what you think of these two and which ones you prefer. That's going to do it for me, guys. Thank you so much for watching. All these will be linked down below. Again, if you want to pick either of these two up, check them out down there. Stay safe. Stay healthy. We'll see you tomorrow night with another one. Take care.